plead the first American dream. I plead the first white shirt, blue jeans. I plead the first American dream. I plead the first white shirt, blue jeans. I plead the first American dream. Hello, everybody. It's 8 February 2021, Monday. I'm putting out my show late, and that's for good reason. I had a lot of funky attitude this morning because my team got spanked in the Super Bowl. So I had to get the uh, funky attitude off of me. I'm good. I've kind of let it all go. And uh, let's just address that elephant in the room. Man, that game was hard to watch. It was hard to watch for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to sit here and blame the whole game on the refs, but it was poorly officiated. Uh, fact of the matter is offense only scored nine points. And you can't score nine points and win a game. You can't do it. The offensive line is an issue. Uh, this isn't a football show, so I won't go too in-depth. But four of our five starting offensive linemen weren't playing. And that's what I believe is the real reason why we weren't able to even overcome the officiating. I think if you're at full health, that team can probably overcome the officiating, and I think Patrick Mahomes isn't running for his life. Uh, he made some incredible throws, just diving and just running for his life. I felt I felt sorry for him. felt sorry for the offensive line guys that were out there because, you know, all year we've patched together offensive lines and had guys out there that are maybe not as good of players as the starters, but they've made it work, and that's kind of the name of the game, next man up. But when you've got your entire offensive line is backup quality, and the only starter that was in there is the center, and he's – I don't want to be insulting to players because any player in the NFL is a phenomenal athlete, world-class, and one of the best football players in the world. But when it comes to NFL talent, our center is uh, he's in the lower tier, right? So the five guys we put out there on that offensive line, they weren't good, man, as far as NFL talent. They're not great talents. Some of them are older uh, and were great. In, not great, but they were solid starters in their career. But they're at the end of their career. It was rough, man. It was a rough game to watch. Next year, man, I think they're going to come back with anger and, and they're going to come back with a vengeance. Some of the players from Tampa Bay showed a complete lack of class. Uh, looking at you, Ant Antoine Winfield Jr., uh, man, I hope we get you guys next year because that was that was not cool. And I get it. Hey, when we, we played them in Week 12, some of our guys were getting a little out of control too. It goes back and forth. That's the nature of the game. And that's, that's what's fun, right? So it's all good, man. Uh, congrats to them. If we see you next year, I hope we see you twice next year. I hope we see you in the regular season and in the Super Bowl again. That's my hope because I think it's going to be a different story. So enough with that, enough with the football, because that's not really what we do on this channel. I mean, it will be sometimes, but enough of the football talk. We're going to move on to some other things. And I wanted to talk about a specific thing here to kind of cheer me up, uh, specifically a, a commercial that I saw in the Super Bowl was one of, I saw a face, a familiar face in a Super Bowl commercial, somebody that I personally know and that I served with. So I was super excited about that. Her name is Meryl Tangisdall, Meryl David Tangisdall. David was her uh, maiden name. She's a retired colonel, a YouTube pilot. Um, she's done so many things in her career, and I just kind of wanted to bring awareness to who this person is. She's going to be a contestant on the show that was advertised several times on the Super Bowl was Tough as Nails, right? So Meryl Tangisdall is going to be a contestant on this reality TV show. She's an awesome person, guys. I'm not much of a reality TV show. Excuse me, buff. I don't really watch reality TV. It's not my thing. But I'm probably going to watch this show just because Meryl's on there. I'm going to watch her. I'm a to cheer for her. She's an awesome human being. She's truly inspiring. Uh, she's the first African-American female pilot of the U-2. The U-2 spy plane is a historic aircraft. If you don't know much about it, go learn something. There's 
tons of YouTube videos on there, but it's an extremely difficult aircraft to fly. It's a, it's a challenge for those guys on, and girls, obviously, uh, in many, many ways. But one of the things that I did when I was there is I worked on spacesuits. Uh, a lot of my buddies that watch this, they did the same thing. So what we would do is we would suit up people like Colonel Tangisdall in their spacesuit, get them all suited up, take them out to the aircraft. Uh, we uh, suit them up, throw them in the aircraft, throw them in the cockpit, strap them in, trying to s explain this simply so that everybody can understand, get them ready, get all their safety equipment ready. We worked on their parachutes and their uh, survival equipment and just kind of take good care of them, make sure they have enough liquids and enough food they they bring tube food up there it's it's food in a what is a essentially a toothpaste tube um don't want to spend too much time on that portion of this i'm kind of i want to focus on colonel tanga's doll but this is my portion of what i know about her um phenomenal person phenomenal pilot she was a helicopter pilot in the navy switched over to the air force to fly the u2 just has tons of hours, tons of combat hours. I've deployed with her a couple times. Great human being, inspiring person. She's from the Bronx. Uh, she's a boxer. I mean, she's a lot of cool things. And when I was serving with uh, Major Tangisdall at the time, uh, I used to joke around with her all the time. I'd tell her, and if you're watching this, Major Tangisdall, Colonel Tangisdall, I used to tell you all the time you were my hero. I meant that. I really did because you're an inspiration to me. And she's awesome person she used to get a little bashful when i'd call her that i'd tell her she is a legend of air power <laughs> she's kind of bashful about that truth is she is though she's done so much accomplished so much in the united states air force accomplished so much in her life as a person a really phenomenal person to learn about go google her and just learn about her spend some time you can Google Meryl David and she'll show up. It's probably the easiest way to look her up. I don't want to sit here and spell her last name because I'll probably get it wrong, to be honest. Uh, but Meryl Tangisdall, Meryl David, you're going to come up with the same person. Fantastic person. She's great. Uh, go learn about her and watch her on the show. I'm going to watch the show just for her. And I don't really know what Tough as Nails is about. I don't know if this is their first season or whatever. I know nothing about it. I'm going to watch the show for her. So I encourage you to do so. Go check it out. With that, I'm going to uh, switch gears to another more serious topic. We talked about it a little bit last time, uh, the gun control stuff that's going on. One of the states out there is really leading the fight against this federal bill and there's some interesting constitutional and legal questions about what this state is doing. And we're going to get into that right now. So first of all, it's the great state of Missouri, my home state. Uh, I like what they're doing. I do have some constitutional questions about what they're doing. But there is a little bit of a precedent for what they're doing. I'm going to compare what they're doing to Colorado. And you'll see why here in a second. I'm reading an article in the Kansas City Star. Uh, it's called Missouri Senate Passes Gun Nullification Bill. So Missouri, a few days after the Texas senator or the Texas representative introduced her bill, we went out and our state representatives in the House of Representatives for the state of Missouri, they passed a bill that said uh, our law enforcement officers in the state of Missouri are not going to enforce whatever you pass. And not only that, any federal officers that decide to enforce uh, gun laws that we deem unconstitutional or an infringement of the Second Amendment, we're going to penalize them and we're going to make them vulnerable to court action, in other words, being sued in the state of Missouri. So if this passes and becomes law, which it looks like it's going to and it's going to happen easily, if they enforce this crazy law, then you can go and you can sue that federal agent for infringing your rights. It's a very interesting way to attack this. And the reason I said there's a precedent for this, it's very similar to what the state of Colorado did with marijuana. And I had some of the same questions about when Colorado did it. I was a fan of that too. 
um, because I'm a fan of state powers. I'm a fan of curtailing any government overreach. I am against the federal legal illegalization of marijuana. I want to legalize it because a bunch of reasons. I think there are far more dangerous substances out there like alcohol. <laughs> and I think we can make a ton of money off of just taxing it and Simultaneously, when you legalize marijuana, you get rid of a whole bunch of uh, basically an illegal industry of pot, right? People smuggling and all that stuff. There's no longer any need to smuggle marijuana in when you make it legal, right? So you get rid of a whole bunch of problems and you get rid of a whole bunch of court cases. You get rid of a lot of things. So I was a fan of that. I don't want to get off track. Missouri's kind of taken that as... I think they've taken that as a little bit of a blueprint for what they're going to do with this gun nullification bill, gun control nullification bill. I think it's pretty good. The Missouri Senate took the the bill that the House, Missouri House passed, and they added to it, and they basically said there's an empo employment ban attached to that now, so they actually strengthened it. I'm not sure about the employment ban and what all that entails. The article is a little bit vague on that. This is happening really quickly. The Missouri Congress moves really fast. So I don't think we've seen everything yet. They just say a employment ban. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't want to ruin federal officers' lives for enforcing law. And I don't think that's their intent. I think their intent is to make them not enforce this specific crazy gun law that's in the House of Representatives, the, U the U.S. House of Representatives right now. They got to be careful. There's a lot of things I love about this. There's a lot of things that could backfire. Uh, it's a very interesting game being played. And I, to my knowledge, Missouri is the only state that's doing this right now. I think other states will watch this closely. Um, the Democrats have come out raging against this as expected and saying it's unconstitutional, which is hilarious uh, to hear them say because they do unconstitutional stuff all the time. Uh, I'm not so sure that this is super constitutional. I am a huge proponent of state power, but it worked in Colorado. So if it worked in Colorado for weed, no reason why it won't work in Missouri for guns. And whatever we got to do to protect our Second Amendment at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much for that. I just want to make sure that it's not going to ruin any uh, federal agents or federal law enforcement's lives. I don't want that. Uh, the way I read it the first time is that basically they could find the federal uh, agency for the enforcement of it. So in other words, they would charge the federal government like 50 grand every time they enforce something like that, which is a deterrent. I just don't want the agents to end up with that bill. And they, they, the, the intent I think is to just make federal agents take pause before they go enforce anything that Missouri is saying. We, we consider this an infringement of our second amendment rights. I don't think what they're trying to do is stop federal agents from going doing good things like getting illegal guns off the streets and out of gang members' hands. I don't think that's what they're trying to do. I think, obviously, that's not what they're trying to do. I think a lot of Democrats are going to say that's the cause or that's the that's the, going to be the result. I think they're just trying to throw anything that'll stick at this so that they can not get it to work. Uh, one of the... One of the attorney generals, or the one of the, it's not the attorney general, the one of the prosecutors in Missouri, I think from Kansas City, went to Jefferson City to argue that basically, if this passes, they're going to lose one of their one of their federal gun enforcement uh, units in Kansas City that primarily deals with gangs, and we don't want that. I don't think that's what the Missouri Congress wants. So they'll work it out. They're going to figure it out. I'm happy somebody is sending the message saying, hey, federal government, 
you can't just go through there and make whatever kind of crazy unconstitutional laws you want because we are an independent state and we will not stand for that. Our constitution protects us and we're going to stick with our constitution. So I think they're on firm ground as far as saying you're not going to infringe the second amendment in our state. So that's a really interesting take that Missouri's got on it. I'm proud of them. I don't think it's perfect, but it's something. And that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I'm proud of with my state is it's something. So go check that out. There's an article on the KansasCity.com, which is the Kansas City Stars website. You can read that or just Google it. Uh, a lot of articles out there. It's really interesting, something to follow. Um, man, I hope other states follow suit and send a message to the United States Congress saying, hey, it's not going to stand. All right. Like you guys can pass craziness if you want, but nobody's going to listen to it because it's unconstitutional. And that is the bottom line, guys. Anything even approaching that gun law that, that uh, what's her name, I, Sheila Jackson, uh, anything even approaching what she's introduced is completely unconstitutional. So with that being said, happy with what Missouri's doing. Uh, it's been a, it's been a long weekend for me, guys. I'm going to go ahead and sign off there. Uh, thank you so much for all the support, like, share, subscribe, get this out there. And, uh, Meryl Tankestall, if you're watching, I appreciate you so much. You've been a mentor to me. I hope you won the show. I think they're probably done with filming already. So you probably either won or lost or whatever, whatever you did, I'm proud of you and Good job. Good on you. I hope you won the whole thing. I'm going to watch the season to find out. And hopefully maybe I can get you on here for a show. So with that, guys, I'm signing off. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Yeah. Everybody smoking all the greenery. Yeah. Close the match because they were handed down to me. But I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I know. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. Let's go.